<laughs> I'm now going to invite Bob Jeffries and Henry Sewer to come to the podium. They're members of the chamber and friends of Lou, and they have some words to offer tonight. Well, thank you, Susan. <clears throat> Don't believe all these nice things you've heard this <laughs> evening. Somebody has to come up here and tell the truth. <laughs> or the rest of the story, as Scott mentioned. And I look at Lewis, who I've known a long, long time, as I call him the outstanding man of opportunities and humor. And let me tell you a little why that's true. This is the fall of 1948, and the Oilers are playing football at Mitchell Field. And just inside, the student council has a concession stand. Well, it's late in the evening, and the hot dogs are gone, but it's chilly. So somebody says, we need some more coffee. And Lou Kraft comes over, and the engineer to be, already solving problems, takes the hot dog water, and makes more coffee. Uh, now, all of you groan a little, but what are we all drinking today is flavored coffee. <laughs> and if we had but recognized that opportunity, Starbucks headquarters would be in this area today. <laughs> now, you also have to realize in this that that hot dog flavored water was excellent for medicinal purposes. <laughs> a few years later, the chamber starts the, uh, uh, the Oil Heritage Week. And the Delphoy Club, which Lou is one of the charter members of that organization, uh, is there working with them. They had a chuck wagon, and they sold barbecue beef sandwiches at the time. And Lou is heard to say, Where's the beef? <laughs> Remember, shortly thereafter, there was a little old lady in National <laughs> TV that was always saying, where's the beef? And even today, there's a guy in a yellow shirt saying, where's the beef? And if we had but recognized that opportunity, <laughs> probably Seneca Street would be the Madison Avenue of the advertising world today. And... Lou's love of history and all that has been mentioned. Well, about the same time, there was another young fellow by the name of Al Gore. And Al Gore was claiming that he invented the internet. Now, if we'd been able to get Lou Kraft and Al Gore together, we'd probably have Kraft.com today rather than Google. <laughs> <laughs> and also, the valley that changed the history of the world would probably be known as Silicon Valley today. <laughs> so you've met and heard and know an awful lot about him. And one evening, a lot of the social light in that time was playing cards. And various couples would gather and play cards. And we were having one of our friendly games one night and a certain young lady felt that Lewis had missed a play, and therefore, she got the queen of spades. Well, she was very upset. She picked up the deck of cards, hurled them at our hero, and bang, hit him right in the chest. <laughs> and the queen of spades is indented in his chest. <laughs> and tattoos were not popular in these days. <laughs> and if uh, we had recognized this opportunity, <laughs> we probably would have the tattoo franchising capital of the entire world. <laughs> and there's a little corollary to this story that Lou, who spends an awful lot of time at the museum, parking as we saw up here, uh, got together with them, and the museum, Benango Museum, decided as a fundraiser they would sell decks of cards similar to this. Well, they went around to the community and offered people the chance to subscribe to a card in the deck. Well, naturally, Lewis took the queen of spades. <laughs> 
You know how you go to a concert and somebody's always saying there's going to be CDs for sale in the lobby. Tonight is no exception. Betsy Kellner and Lewis are going to be out in the lobby. <laughs> They're going to be offering decks of cards at a slight fee, of course. But the interesting thing, for a substantial donation to the museum, Lewis will open his shirt <laughs> and you will see the Queen of Spades. Now, while all this is going on, as was mentioned, Lewis and Doris are busy running the family business and they're paving the streets and the driveways and building the buildings and pouring the concrete and doing all these things, you know. But Lewis always had time for a practical joke. And one of his favorites was in Halloween. He had an ape suit. And he would go in and put his ape suit on, and he'd come around and terrorize the children <laughs> of all his friends. But one of his favorites, when Snyder's store was up on Seneca Street, Lewis would run into the store with his ape suit on, grab a banana, and go, <laughs> and he'd be gone out the door. <laughs> It, the practical jokes never ended, and they were always his. A friend would ask, Lewis, I need a little topsoil for my little garden plant, and look out the window, and boom, here comes Lewis in his dump truck, and he'd pull up to your side yard, pull the lever, and you'd have a whole load of topsoil <laughs> in your yard. Or maybe in Boquin Circle is having a luminaria for Christmas time. And they said, Lewis, could you bring us some sand? Once again, the truck comes up, the dump comes on, and the whole yard is filled with sand. <laughs> well, you know what Oil City can be like at Christmas. And naturally, as fate would have it, there's a freezing rain that night. The sand is already wet. It freezes into a solid blob and <laughs> sitting there in the driveway. But the ever-resourceful Beverly and Henry Sewer made the best of it. They decorated that frozen pile for Christmas, and then for New Year's, and then for Groundhog Day, <laughs> and finally for St. Patrick's Day and Easter, and by Mother's Day, this big pile could be removed. <laughs> That was just typical of the kind of things he would do. <laughs> now, he was always the friendly, devious guy of the gang, and everybody just followed him around to be with this personality, you know. And there was a group that became known as the Mischievous Merrymakers, and Lou, of course, was the leader. <laughs> well, to this gang, birthdays were a delight. You never knew whether a large animal was going to be placed in your yard, maybe an outhouse. <laughs> pianos were every place. I don't know where all these pianos came from, but everybody <laughs> got a piano on their course. Or maybe a sign was cemented into your yard. <laughs> and one of the worst was you might hear a ruckus outside, look out the window and see Lewis leading the merrymakers up the street carrying a coffin. <laughs> and, well, by now, you have sort of a feeling why I look at Lewis as the outstanding man of opportunities in humor. So I'm going to ask Henry Sewer, who was a charter member of the Merrymakers, <laughs> and also, as you saw, a recipient of this in 1994, and Lewis, our recipient for 2011, to please come join me up here. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, uh, Jeff, for that. Uh, those old memories that uh, I thought a lot of those things had been forgotten. <laughs> so they got them back again. I had a uh, I had a little speech that I was going to make uh, 
tonight, and uh, I mentioned it to Susan Williams, and she said, hey, nothing doing. She said, uh, that's out. <laughs> so I, and besides that, all the remarks that have been made by the other uh, speakers here have pretty much taken the steam out of my uh, remarks, but uh, I want you all to know that <clears throat> I consider uh, being a part of this presentation to Lou Kraft a, a tremendous honor. I've known Lou uh, since I was a little kid. We've been dear friends most all of our lives. We've gone to church together. We've gone to school together. We were in the same class. And, and I, I think this the size of the group of people in this room is a tribute to this fine gentleman, and you've heard the, the, all the good things and a few of the bad, but <laughs> in any case, it's my honor to present on behalf of the Venango County Chamber of Commerce the uh, Outstanding Citizen of the Year Award to Lewis Robert Kraft, who thoroughly deserves this, and I, I, uh, can only say this, uh, Lou, it's, uh, uh, it's nice to get your roses while you can still smell them. <laughs>